Guys, gals, and fellow gender non-conforming pals, welcome back. My legal name is C2A, and I got the suit back. How about that? It's looking pretty fancy, and I'm thinking this is going to be my suit for networking in the future. I'm quite liking it. Yeah. So today in class, projection tech. Yes. Let's move on to that slide, shall we? So. Projection tech actually has quite an old history. That's kind of cheating, kind of cheating, but it is legitimate. The magic lantern. It's a little device that looked like this, and that magic device there essentially had a little oil lamp with some hand-painted glass or other material stuff on it that would project out the image. Yeah, I know, very rudimentary, right? But at the time, this is how in the 1650s, I know, 1650s, that old, people would um, assist presentations or perhaps stories, storytelling, is have this. You can even have them animated where you have a little lever system that moves like a boat back and forth or all sorts of stuff. Pretty decent stuff for the 1650s, must say. Quite cool. But um, it doesn't really start getting interesting until the 1890s. In 1895, the Paris um, Expo had a bunch of fun tech shown off to the world. One of those fun bits of tech that was shown off was a little device by the Lumiere brothers. Edison had his own thing too, but it was. Kind of like a one-person deal. People didn't uh, enjoy it as much. But the Lumiere brothers had this thing. And that thing there was what you could consider the world's first projector. Now, since the um, 1890s, we've improved quite a bit. We've got a few different types of projectors now. Um, from uh, we, we did have CRT projectors using cathode ray tubes, look like that. Uh, we've had DLP projectors, a little bit more common, um, look like that. And we've had LCD projectors like that. Now, what's the difference? Well, if we go back to the DLP projector, actually, let's go back to the um, CRT projector. Essentially, it is um, just cathode ray tubes, three of them, shooting out your image, and it gets colored by the lenses. It'll have the, you see, you have the three lenses in the front and those three lenses are coloring a grayscale image. And that grayscale image is corresponding to the uh, luma of your red, green, and blue. And you get them all lined up together and you get a color image. Quite nice. The easier version of that is DLP. Um, Digital light processing. DLP is a little funky. It uses tiny little mirrors that can tilt and whatnot to change like whether you are having a color on or off. Now, it is quite old tech. And essentially, you'd have a spinning wheel of color. So you could have just the primary colors. You could have your primary and secondary colors. And you would time this just right. So you have the luma for each color set perfectly. And this color wheel would be moving pretty fast to be able to trick your eyes into seeing color. So if you wanted like purple, you'd have a little bit of red and then a little bit of blue. Um, so part of your intensity goes to that, part of your intensity goes to the other one. Uh, of course, if you want red, you just have that section of whatever pixels you want not on. When red is not on. And yeah, it's just a timing game from there. Um, LCD projectors are probably the easiest of them all. They just use a beam of white light that bounces through the filters um, and then can go at the end. A little bit easier than having to get all the timing and stuff for the color wheel and then, you know, still has to go through filters. Um, but LCD projection, pretty cool. And very similarly to what I said last video log about the plasma TV, because you're able to get these fine points of light, um, it gives you a better contrast ratio. So very similar to that. Now, 
operating these projectors is not as simple as point, shoot, you're done. You could do that if you're just watching movies on the side of your neighbor's house. You could do that. It's very easy. It works. But if you're doing like a corporate event or you're doing something where you need to have this thing set up and it looks damn good, then what I recommend you do is what we were talking in class, is keystoning. Keystoning is essentially making sure that your the shape of your image is fit to the shape of your screen. So you don't have any areas where, oh, look, there's like air the screen's not hitting or the screen is going over where you're supposed to be. Uh, essentially, it's warping that screen to fit where you're trying to put it. And I could give you an example of bad keystoning like that. Or an example of good keystoning, like that. Hopefully I was able to find those images. Good. Now in class, we did touch a little bit on projection mapping and how that plays into projection as well. Being able to do is sort of a 3D projection as opposed to just 2D. Now you're not making a hologram. It's more so mapping light to a 3D object as opposed to a 2D plane. And you can get some pretty cool effects. Um, if I can find a fun GIF, you know, you can get stuff like this. If I can't find a fun GIF, that was just a uh, still image. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm using um, a cable that I made in a class in Principles of Electronics. Yeah. It's rather one I repaired. Chopped the ends off and made it better. Got, be got better solder in it. So it's got better connection and whatnot. So if I, like, drop this thing, it's not going to break. And just fall off because it had, like, the smallest amount of solder. So sad. Also got rid of um ground issue where, like, if I were to touch this, I would immediately become part of the circuit. Not good. <laughs> Got rid of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's class. And the other part of class, uh, lecture-wise, was we got back into our group again, and we are finalizing the documents I was talking about. So that um, stage plot, we got that finished. We have the um, request list of everything, the item list that we need, the counts of everything. Uh, and then more on that a bit in lab, we did need to uh, count, the cable, count the cables and whatnot. And then the final thing was just the group chatter, the whole thing on what's the action plan, which we could probably use some revision on. Um, that one's not weighted as the other ones are. So less stress about grades, but like more, we should be more organized with what we're doing, to be honest. So let's go into lab. I was able to get some media of lab for you today. So the main new thing that we're doing in lab is we've got the projector and we're setting up everything. Everything. It is hectic and that is the primary reason why I think we might need to get the group charter um, a little bit more organized and find build teams. I definitely recommend that. If you have this class next, whoever you're with in your lab group, let them know about this assignment. Tell them, hey, we're going to have to set up equipment and it'd be really good to have like teams set up for each section. Once you've done lab four, I believe, lab four gives you a pretty good estimate of what everything is. So if after lab four, you feel confident in an area, Definitely tell your lab mates, hey, let's work in this area and not have everyone go hectic trying to build everything randomly. Uh, build teams are definitely going to be important. Not touched on in class at all, just advice. Advice from uh, my lab group to yours. So, like I said, we're building the projection screen and we're working more with the projector. Uh, I did get media. I, I told you, I got media. I got footage of that being built and I got permission from people. They're like, okay, you can, you can put me on YouTube. That's good. So we'll see some faces um, and people. Those people are like, you're good. You can put me on YouTube. So thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Here's the, um, the first of the footage I got, if I don't play it all. Uh, I probably will play it all, but we'll see. So here's the uh, first bit of footage, which is just us taking out the framing for the projector. Looks like this. Walk pictures along the way. Go ahead. Um, so your screen, which is our top part right here, this is actually one of your most expensive parts. But for now, um, I'm gonna actually go ahead, stick it right here for now. And then we got our skirt. And there's a diagram here in the bottom. So if we wanna grab the corners, there are the four corners out, we're gonna build this. So we're gonna need to connect two yellows 
And then that's going to come on top. And then next up, we're doing more assembly of like the legs and then adding on the screen. Very cool. So four people want to grab the corners? I want to take a tag with the camera. If you want to keep the tag here, if somebody else wants to grab the corner, this corner. So now, if you look, you're going to see the elastic part and then a cloth part. What we want, go corner to corner first. And so the elastic part is going to be the part to come across like the sprocket holes. I don't know if you caught that. Yeah. Use the elastic part to go over. Up and over. I see. Too so easy. Well, we've had some use the cloth uh, yeah. part. In a sense. Yeah. I'm sure that's how I mean. I mean in a sense. Yeah. Probably to the it's second important. one to the top. Yeah. Probably the second one. Not the first one. Which is either one. You see this one right here? Yeah. So now, if you look on these, there's one that's right at the end. They should, they're kind of magnets, so they slide right on top of each other. They should slide into place. For the screws? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there is one. And then finally, we've got it up and running, and then you can see it. And all in all, that was lab. Now I might have a few extraneous videos, so anything else I shot will go here. So all in all, lab taught us that we need to be more organized in what we're doing. It's gonna be very important um, for this final lab which we literally have two more days to practice and then we're done there's nothing else so we got to be on our shit, so to say i'm confident we can get things done but there's still a few issues like primarily we had an issue with screens is we still can't really show me the uh presenter notes that's that's still a bit of an issue we've got things figured out so hopefully that'll get sorted but I might have to improvise some bits, which would uh, be unfortunate because that would make the, pres the presentation of a lower quality. <laughs> I would not like that to happen. But I think we got a good direction now of where things are going. We got a good run through of setting up, tearing down, and some potential issues we might run into. We found some ways to be more efficient in setting up through failures that we have, but little hit, we'll call them little happy accidents, not failures. So I'm confident that we will get things done more efficiently and more effectively next lab. And hopefully the lab after as well. But that's all for Full Sail. C28 business. Um, again, we have that video coming out Friday. Today, actually, if you are not control voltage, today. <laughs> uh, and that video should post at the same time as this one. So uh, yeah, if you're watching this one first, Yay! Thank, thank you for watching this video first, I, I suppose. I'm only biased because I'm in this one. I'm in the other one too, but that was an older me. <laughs> um, but yes, the sixth episode of Synthetic Design is posting today, if you're not a control voltage. And I hope you enjoy it. There's some really quality stuff going on with the sound. The dynamic textures in it are just perfect. They're just so nice. The way things move and screech and growl. They don't really screech, but they move and growl and whoa, whoa, whoa. They're, like, they're so cool. So check them out today, please. Uh, I think you might like it. And if you do enjoy it, you can let me know in the comments below. Both videos if you like, but, you know, preferably this synthetic design episode. Um, so, of course, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'll get back to them. And if I super enjoy your comment, I'm like, you know what? Other people should see this comment. I'll put it in the space. Yeah, your comment would be like, there it is. It's, it's gone now. But you'll get your comment in the space. Yeah, 
Again, if you did enjoy it, you can subscribe and YouTube will happily give you more recommendations for videos like this one from myself and other creators. And if you super duper enjoyed it, like a lot, a lot, a lot, they were like, this is one of the best videos I've seen on YouTube or somewhere around that range, you know, that's fine. You could consider becoming a control voltage by joining that little blue button that pops up after subscribe that will allow you to gain the rank of control voltage where you get access to the discord, you get early access to videos and behind the scenes content as well. Fun stuffs. I'll be shooting the members only live probably today, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. I'm still coordinating with everyone else, trying to see what's good, what's bad, what works. So I'll leave another uh, message in Discord for y'all and we'll see what works for us. Now, if we only get one or two years, eh, it is what it is. <laughs> but I, I would like to not be alone on a live stream, you know, that would be so sad and unfortunate. So if at least one of you could join, that would be nice. Well, that does it for the, the outro stuff. So I hope you all take the f care of yourselves. God be with you. And goodbye, YouTube. We'll go back to the, the little hand thing, all right? I'm going to push in. You ready? Okay.